The problem is a puzzle. Each piece reveals a little more. In this veteran's medical bills and past due statements, we see the demand for dollars. It's the decimals and desperation. They come from doctors, bill collectors, and nicer sounding, but just as demanding, reimbursement specialists. This is the puzzle the Department of Veterans Affairs needs to solve. It's a new day out west, a changing horizon where border security and people coexist peacefully. All right. Art. The tomb of the unknown soldier. A changing of the guard. This monument honors all U.S. war dead. Some say focused, unflinching determination and a unified sense of purpose placed the World War II soldier supreme in the pantheon of American military greatness. Our end goal is identification. Her nameless and faceless body was discovered on La Cantinita Ranch. Consignment store shopper John Flores told us we would find the Purple Heart here. We don't have a story unless there's something written on, the, on it. The shelves at Alvin Potter's consignment store are filled with unwanted military memorabilia. It's, it's been here for at least three months. This Purple Heart was one of those unwanted items. We attempted for several months to find something out. The name on the back of the medal was their only clue. Gordon, G-O-R-D-O-N, N, Coomers. Now the Potters wanted to put a value on the Purple Heart, so when they went onto the internet, they found something interesting. The only appraisals they could find were for the outside of the case. The metal itself, seem to be priceless. The permanent placement of the peacekeeper is a mystery. Pedimos por el descanso de esas personas, no nada más de las personas de este accidente, ¿verdad? De todas las personas que vienen buscando un futuro y que de alguna forma trágicamente quedan en el camino. She laid at Sacred Heart Cemetery in Falfurias until last summer when her bones were unearthed. We followed her body from Brooks to one of three forensic labs tasked with identifying the 63 dead. The Freeman Ranch is nestled in the rolling hills outside San Marcos. A walk through the door reveals what looks like a ranch house is really a state-of-the-art forensics facility. Here, Texas State anthropology students are telling the stories of the dead. That includes case number 0425. The U.S. Border Patrol activated this aerostat about a year ago. Pretty much a lot of cameras. Cantu's curiosity peaked. 24-7, there's Border Patrol. Cameras point towards... Mexico. The body shop is in the line of sight. Cantu's never seen recorded footage. I'd like to see it, though. <laughs> Come on in. Okay, what are we walking into? On every Border Patrol station, you'll find command, control, communication, and information center with all the video surveillance, radio dispatch, on the horizon, a black and white view of the border. Is this man 24 hours a day? It is. Kevin Oakes is the sector chief for the Rio Grande Valley. He started the job about six months ago. And the more eyes we have on the border, the better off we're all. Added to the screen, playback from five aerostats. We put the technology where there's the highest threat. And right now, the Rio Grande Valley is the highest threat in terms of border security missions throughout the nation. They say, hey, well, it's, you, we, it's be too expensive to have a hospital here. We'll contract these, uh, these local hospitals. Fine, contract them, but pay the bill. Here's how it's supposed to work. Veterans like Eduardo go to the doctor. The doctor bills Coastal Bend for fee-based services. Coastal Bend pays the bill. Never supposed to see it. Eduardo's stack of puzzle pieces shows that rarely happens in his case. $601 for this last bill. Not just bills, I get calls from them. And that bothers me, you know what I mean? And calls, threats that they're gonna uh, refer me to collection agencies. It was horrific. A former high-level employee at Valley Coastal Bend helped us put these pieces together. The World War II Memorial. 69 years after coming home, Hinaro Samora gets his first look 
at the nation's monument to his and other warriors' sacrifice. The Japanese were firing small fire. You could hear the ricochet of them hitting the barges. Them seeing it for the first time is, uh, is something, e each one has its own story. Each expression has its own story. Stories like those of 93-year-old Daniel Montes of Brownsville, a Navy gunner's mate at Okinawa. My buddies, you know, when they were shooting the plane, the buddies fell and would die, and, and uh, that was a terrible experience. To me, those are my heroes because they were protecting, we were protecting ourselves, and they, they didn't come back, and, and I'm, I'm, thank God that I'm here. Here, too, George Short, remembering friends who paid for the taking of Okinawa in blood. A successful smuggling operation works under the radar. It's buried in the brush. No trace of illegal immigrants. No record of human smugglers. No proof of the path taken to enter the United States. All day long, smugglers across the Rio Grande River in Roma work in broad daylight. Channel 5 News watched as they blew up rafts, took their payments, and sent men floating across the river. They shouted threats at us while playing a game of cat and mouse with Border Patrol agents on the U.S. side of the river. About a dozen vehicles circle the bank on the Mexican side all day, many with Texas license plates. For these veterans, now in their 80s and 90s, a once-in-a-lifetime journey, a welcome home, a final salute.